Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Angel of Words podcast. I'm your host, Angel of Words, and before we get started, don't forget to click on that notification bell, like, dislike, comment, share, do what you need to do on those uh, avenues to make sure that we get as much messages out there as we can. Next, please uh, follow us on all podcast platforms. We're on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google, Google Podcasts, anywhere you get your podcast. Also, you could go to our website and access us there at AOWENT.com and read the blog. Lastly, you could donate to the Angel of Words podcast at Cash App AOWNYC. Now, on deck, we have community contributor here in the New York City area, Miss Tina Shen. Miss Shen, hello. How are you? Thank you for joining us here on the Angel of the Words podcast. It is a pleasure to have you today. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Angel. It is it is fantastic because you're doing such great work. You know, from what I from what I've seen on your on your uh, downtime or whatever you want to call it. You're doing great work with the elderly community down in Chinatown, which is very, very important. First and foremost, Tina, I want to ask you why someone your age cares about the Asian, you know, not only the Asian community or the Chinese community, but the elderly community overall. Well, I've always, um, because I am Chinese, so okay. I guess so it's is it kind a of ingrained. Thing? I feel like it definitely is a cultural thing that kind okay. of is ingrained into our daily lives. So filial piety is something very important. And I think that for me, being able to help people who are older than me or for seniors who need assistance, especially if English is not their first language here. I think it's very important and very rewarding to be able to assist them. So you do speak uh, very dialects of the Chinese language? Oh, yes. So my parents are from Shanghai, so I can okay. speak Shanghainese, the dialect. I can okay. understand a little bit of Cantonese. I'm still working on it. They okay. said that the best way to learn Cantonese is to watch dramas from Hong Kong, so... <laughs> I have to watch some dramas. <laughs> so, I love that because, you know, people don't understand that there's a lot of different dialects spoken in the Chinese language. Yes, Various. Right. Now, everybody always thinks it's Mandarin and Cantonese, but you just finished mention you just finished mentioning one that's Shang, you know, Shanghainese. You know, like people need to understand that there's, you know, just like the Spanish language or any other language, or even the English language, is different dialects spoken across the nation. Oh yes, definitely, exactly, and that's what makes every culture so unique. I guess it's um, it's very nice. So. For me, I speak Mandarin fluently and Shanghainese fluently, so I'm able to help seniors who can only speak Shanghainese or who can speak Mandarin. So usually a lot of Shanghainese seniors, they can also speak Mandarin. That's just a thing that's kind of normal. For other dialects, it may be that some seniors, they can't even speak Mandarin at all. So... But for Shanghainese people, they usually can speak Mandarin, but it, it can be tough. So when they find out that I speak Shanghainese, they're like, oh, we should have started with that to begin with. Everything's so much easier now. Wow, that's interesting. You grew up in New York City, correct? Yes, I was born and raised Okay, in so my question is to you, are, are the Chinese people that are from... Uh, you know that that are that have come over here to this country and have been living here for a while. Are they mostly Shanghainese? Is that is that a thing? Because you know, I, I, we like to build you know understanding here in the Angel of Words you know podcast. You know, we we we, we, grew, we, we grow up learning that all right, everyone in New York City is uh, either if they're Asian or they're Chinese. You know, they either speak Mandarin or Chinese, but there's there. Shanghainese are most people speaking that 
Uh, actually, not really. Because, okay. uh, yes, okay. the group of uh, Shanghainese immigrants, from my knowledge, is relatively newer than, for example, the Cantonese immigrants. So I, I know that Cantonese immigrants were probably the first ever to settle into the Uni United States. So um, then, you know, there's like different waves of people coming in, like people from Fuzhou, Fujian, they're coming in in, you know, waves. And then the Shanghainese people. And then the people from northern China, so like, you know, where Beijing is, they're relatively new. So Shanghainese and Beijing people are relatively new. And not all of us, yeah. Not all of us here speak Shanghai, so I guess we're kind of like a minority within the Chinese community here. So, so there has been a shift in the the, uh, the 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 immigration, if you will, of the Chinese community to America. Definitely. In terms of like the languages that they speak in the regions that they come from, because there's several regions, obviously, in in yes. in China. Yes. Wow, it's kind of like a kind. It's very interesting. <clears throat> Now, no, I mean, that it is. We could have a whole conversation about that. You just threw me off there. But it's great because, you know, that's what, you know, we want to learn about that, man. We want to know about that. Now, you work with the Asian community, uh, the elderly Asian, Asian community, which I could imagine, you know, I mean, myself, I'm, I deal with the, the, uh, a, a lot with the Latino community. Uh, elderly community, but you have a lot of respect and you working with the elderly, age, well, not the elderly Asian community, but the elderly Chinese community here in New York City. And we want to know, you know, not only why is, because, you know, you told us why it's important to you, but well, why is it important to you, actually? Because we know it's a cultural thing, but why is it important for you to go out of your way to do that? I feel for that, it just happened that way because when okay. I graduated out of college, fresh out of college, okay. the only job that I was, you know, looking for and was available to me was a job at a senior center in Flushing. Okay. okay. Yes. And so Shout I learned a Shout out to Flushing Queens that. where, you know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. So, um, I learned a lot from that job, from helping seniors, and I realized that it is a passion for me to be able to help seniors who have that language barrier and also have mobility barrier, all of that. So it's, it's really great, and I hope that I can continue to do that in the future as well. Well, I mean, you're, you're doing it, and not only are you doing it, in, you're doing it in style, you know, you're, you're working over here at, uh, it's called the Sunlight, correct? Yes, Sunlight Adult. The Sunlight Adult, Adult Daycare Center. Um, and do, do you go there yourself to work with them, or do you work with them, like, indirectly? Like, what's happening there? Could you explain to us what you do for the Sunlight Daycare Center over there in Flushing? Yes, so I help with organizing programs for them. Like, for example, I help organize events that we have to, because for us, for Sunlight Adult Daycare, it's more of like a social daycare for seniors to come in during the day and have fun, basically, and socialize with other, other peers. So with this, we have, like, schedules of different activities for them to do, like, for example, singing, Tai Chi, dance, art classes, and art in various forms, of course, like Chinese calligraphy, watercolor painting, paper cutting, sketching, it goes on. And then, uh, what else? Piano class, English class, it, the list goes on. And yeah, so no, she also have technology classes there as well, correct? Uh, yes, exactly. We do. So we have computer class, teach them how to navigate a computer and their iPads because they have iPads, which is very nice. 
<laughs> that must be crazy, right? Like they have iPads, but they don't know how to use them. Do you notice that a lot? Like yeah. what's happening there? The irony, they have really nice smartphones and they come in and like, Tina, can you teach me how to use this? Why, yeah. uh, my daughter got me this uh, cell phone. How do I use it? And I'm like, oh, I wish I upgraded to that phone. Wow. And and you also teach them art, right? Because you're an artist by trade, correct? Oh. Like yeah. that is like your like your your I would say your natural talent. Because I've oh, seen some of your you. stuff. And we're gonna get into that later. But you actually work in the artwork with with what you're doing there in the community at the center. Yes, that's definitely one of my passions too. And it started when I was very young. Um, so when I was five years old, I went to a Chinese cultural center to learn dancing, but I was more drawn to paper cutting when they had okay. the classes. And so my teacher... Now, were you born uh, here or were you born uh, back in China? I was born here. Okay, okay. Yes. In downtown as well, actually. So In Chinatown? I, yes. So okay. in downtown hospital, which is now called like New York Presbyterian or something. Yeah. Like by So you're from the Low East slash slash Chinatown slash Little Italy area, <laughs> Low East Theater. Yes. You're from there. All right. Cool. Yes. That's dope. All right, cool. Yes. So I went to elementary and middle school there as well. So I okay. completely completely like a lower east sider, I guess. Yeah, that's dope. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I, at five years old, I went to the, I started taking the paper cutting classes at the cultural center and it just grew on me. And so it's interesting because I learned to cut before I learned to draw. Usually drawing helps with cutting, of course, because you can like outline what you want to create. Whereas for cutting, if you make a mistake, you can't fix it because you cut it. So then I continued to pursue art in high school. I went to LaGuardia High School of Music and Art near Lincoln Center. So I studied, I majored in visual arts and continued to learn how to draw properly. And then now I'm just on my own. And during my free time, I try to cut more pieces out. Now... Here in the American community, you know, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say in the other communities here in America where we don't know too much about, you know, Chinese culture, uh, we feel like Chinese children uh, are the parents don't give you a boost when it comes to being a. Uh, an artist, like they want you to be different careers. Did you deal with that? They, yes. So a lot of, of my friends, they're, you know, uh, they also have like typical Chinese parents where they're like, you have to be a doctor, you have to be a lawyer. But for my parents, they've been always very supportive of my art and hoping that I can do something bigger with it. And so right now I do like have a uh, TikTok for my art. Hopefully I blow up one day. I don't know. But also I teach the seniors so that they can learn as well. Well, TikTok is growing up. I mean, that's the evolution of society. So <laughs> just tell your parents, I'm growing up. I'm on the, the, the newest platform and doing the newest <laughs> things that I have created. You know, you got to let them know that because they don't know that, you know. And TikTok is actually from, you know, the, the other side of the world. You know, it's from, you know, Asia, if I'm not mistaken. That's where it was created. Now, oh, yeah, okay. do is it fun for you uh, teaching the elderly community over there at the uh, Sunlight Daycare Center, which is a daycare center for the elderly that is in Chinatown? I mean, not in Chinatown, in Flushing, correct? Yes, exactly. Okay. Not to be mistaken for a children's daycare. Yes, exactly. We okay. want to make sure that. Yes, definitely. Now, so, do you deal? With, okay, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh yes. Yeah. So not. They, they really like it. They really like 
art in every form. And actually, you probably don't know this, we also have um, some members who are not Asian. Oh, oh my God. God, you took the words right out of my mouth. That was going to be my next question. That's so cool. Oh, really? So speak on that. That's dope. <laughs> yeah, so we have um, we have a Latina members and Hispanic members. So it's um, it's very nice how all the cultures emerge together. It's like completely different because um, some of the members, they, they of course, they don't speak Chinese and the Chinese member can't speak Spanish, but they can mingle together. They can have parties together so it's great it's like we're one big family and i do have a lot of students for paper cutting who are not chinese well let me tell you as a person who enjoyed paper cutting in school when they taught it to us that was always awesome <laughs> <laughs> right it is so there's awesome. nothing more dope than to realize what you can do with paper it's really crazy <laughs> wow, what's the food like over there? Oh my god, that must be awesome though with the food situation and in, in, in that oh, in that really? uh uh how you say when that comes together? Wow. Thank you. So for sunlight, they try to like get every food um fresh. So they get the food fresh and then they prepare it in their in-house kitchen. So we try to make it as healthy as possible. So um, that's that's kind of one of the main missions of Sunlight is to prepare healthy food, balanced as well, to maintain you know health for seniors. So we um, sometimes we have like different cultural days, so that but we also account for like you know uh, how. There's, it has to be low oil, low sugar, things like that. Wow. And on those cultural days, do you mix cultures and they get to learn about each other's culture? That sounds amazing for seniors yeah, that definitely. have been in this country for a while and they're from the low east side. They've been seeing each other. Probably don't know anything about each other, but they they hear it because you have to hear it. And then you have to, you know, because, you know, I've been on the low east side a bunch of times, especially like at 830 in the morning watching the Asians, you know, the the the, the people that are participating in Chai Chi. You know, I, I say Asian because I'm not going to assume that everybody's Chinese, you know what I'm saying, participating in those things. But you know what I'm talking about in the parks down there yeah. near Madison Street? Yes, yes. Yes, they're so funny. But we also have Tai Chi in the morning. They'll be like, oh, no, because sometimes we have to account for traffic, right? But we have to, we drive um, to and from their home to pick them up. And then sometimes when there's traffic, they're going to be like, no, we're going to miss the Tai Chi class. And then once they get here, they go straight to the big ballroom where they, um, it's like everyone is in rows and doing Tai Chi. Oh man, that's awesome! I love it. And do the Latinos get involved in that at all? Do they? Because I do Chai Chi myself. I feel like you know. <laughs> do yes, they get involved? I remember you told me that is incredible. Yeah. They do sometimes. That's dope, man. I love it, man. You know, I, I do because, you know, New York is a wonderful place to learn about different cultures. And it really is disconcerting when I hear that you're growing up in this, in, in this, especially in this city. And you're not, you know, uh, trying to learn about different things or at least open to receiving information you got to be down with the cause but i see a lot of cultures you know and i see a lot of people within our culture your culture i'm sure you witnessed that as well where they don't want to partake in anything else they want to feel like they're still in their country and live like they're still in their and their various countries and it's good to know that you you involved in a center with elderly people at that that are willing to open their minds up to different things that's fantastic thank you yes to think that you know someone who's more traditional, someone who's you know yes. older, to be mm -hmm. more, very open-minded. That I need to learn from them. I definitely need to learn from them. But every time we have like cultural, why days, do you say that? You're a young person. You're not open-minded. <laughs> I can be more open-minded. There's always room to be more open-minded. Well, do you consider they yourself are, a closed-minded individual? Well. I don't want to think that, okay. but who knows? When I see that the seniors, they are able to accept each other's cultures 
and be like, oh, this tastes really good. Genuinely, I'm surprised. I'm yeah. actually surprised. And so I definitely want to be like them. Okay, so you don't eat different foods? You eat the same oh, foods that you I, grew up with? I do eat different foods. I love Oh, well, that's good. I mean, that's a start. I always tell people, that's a start. If you're eating different foods, that's where you begin, you know? Everything <laughs> else is easy. You know? <laughs> yeah. For me, it's uh, no ginger and cilantro. Other than that, I can eat everything. I love eating people. Uh, not people. Oh, my gosh. I was going to say people. Um, I love eating foods from different cultures. Not people. Oh. Good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Eat the food, not the people. You know? <laughs> now, I'm curious, right, at these centers, like, you know, because you're a part of a, a I mean, I don't know what it's like to, to, to live in, in that culture, but I know that, that it's been a, h- hard for, like, my Latino culture to get vaccinated. Are people getting vaccinated in the Chinese community? How do they feel about that? Like overall, from what you've witnessed, obviously, anecdotally, you know, not we're not talking in general. We're just talking about from what you witnessed. Is the vaccine a big deal? Uh, from what I've seen, it is a big deal. A lot of people ask about, oh, where can I get the booster? Where can I get you know, the vaccine? When yeah. oh, it was last year. So, um, I mean, earlier this month, uh, this year. So, like, I feel like for everyone, they just hope that they can protect their family, be protected as well. It's not not a lot of objections that I know of. Okay. Okay. Now, you know, w- when Trump was spewing all that hatred and, and saying Chinese virus and things of that nature, how did that, did that affect your community at all? Did you not listen to him? Because, you know, a lot of Chinese people grew up with Trump that live in New York City. Was it something that they, they're like, oh, he's just crazy? Or was it something <laughs> like that like was affecting the community at all? It definitely affected. I think we had a couple protests uh, in the city regarding that because who knows if it originated from China, right? And to be calling a virus Chinese, that is bottom line racist. And the hatred that he caused from saying that, that caused so much terrible, terrible consequences for the Asian community. A lot of Asian hate happened because people thought that they could and they're entitled to express their hatred against hate Asians, which is totally not right. We shouldn't How did that make that you feel personally? How did that make you feel personally? Well, that's how I felt. Okay, that's how you felt as well, and that was the overall theme that from the people that you spoke to personally, that's how you felt. Yeah, so we all felt that way. Well, and then... And then you also mentioned that that did lead to a lot of Asian hate crime, you know? It really did. Really and it's very unfortunate to see, you know, to, yeah. to the point where, you know, you deal with the elderly and elderly people were, 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 were you know, getting beat up. By, and I'm talking about different races, you know what I'm saying? We're culpable as well, the Latino race, you know what I mean? There, there, was, there was things going on with the black race. There, there was a lot of animosity, you know what I'm saying, that, that, that was viewed. Like, how, and how did that make you feel I when you're seeing this on the media? I sympathize with people who yeah. were causing these crimes in the way that there was a lot of uncertainty during the pandemic because for one a lot of people were getting sick a lot of people were passing away right and also because of the pandemic we were not able to socialize as we were before so i sympathize with you know the sudden change of character or like you know feeling uncertain and probably insecure and that's what caused it but it's it's not right we shouldn't be lashing out on innocent people. And this pandemic should bring us together instead of causing fractures like among races. That is not what should have happened. You um, know, it, it, no, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead continue. No, no, you go ahead. 
No, you had something to say. I don't want to cut you off. No, go continue if you had another p- point to make because, you know, I've, I have a lot of points. Yeah. So I can't imagine what happened during the Black Lives Matter movement because yeah. right now for us, for Asians, we're spreading the word to each other, being like, oh, don't stay out too late. Don't wear pretty things because you might get mugged. And that is the restriction of freedom, right? We, we should have the freedom to express ourselves, the freedom to stay out as long as we can without any repercussions. No, you're, abs- you're, you're right about that. But you, and, and, I mean, and, and Congress took steps to make sure that they passed the Asian hate, you know, the the uh, hate crime bill. But then that caused some more animosity, though, within the black community from some of the people that I spoke to, because they were like, yo, why does it, why does that happen to the Asians so quickly? But we've been fighting for anti hate crime legislation for such a long time. And then there you have another situation going on, you know? Exactly. So it's, it's so tough. We really need to standardize everything. I wish that we could all be equally treated in that so that we can get, has it passed for the, for African Americans yet? No, no. It's something that's still, that, that, that's still in the works. It's been in the works since the 1960s, you know, <laughs> you know, it's unfortunate, you know what I mean? It's, you know, it's, yeah, and you know, and, and, and you know, and and that's the that's the issue. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, um, I don't know if 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 you if you heard of the the uh, Middle Eastern gentleman that has the show on Netflix, um, oh, Hassan Hassan Minhaj, like you know, he was you know he was upset at you know his the Middle Eastern community for like not stepping in there, and you know, and and that's the thing right now, you know, and that's what what the Angel of Words podcast is all about is having these conversations because we're all American, and I feel like sometimes we're all living in this bubble in the same city, going through the same things, but none of us like really are reaching out to you. Like you reached out to me, you know, I reached out to you. We're having a conversation to know because I want to know how you feel, you know, I want to let you know how. The, the, what the Latin, Latin American community is going through. I'm letting you know also by dealing with the black community firsthand and things that I hear, you know, what they're feeling, you know, obviously. And, you know, it's great that you took the time out to, to, to actually talk to us, especially about these important things. Now, I also want to bring something up that's very important, though. Homelessness. In, you know, oh. during the pandemic, you know, and the, the 300% increase in New York City overall, but also the increase in the homelessness uh, with 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 um, not only uh, Chinese uh, uh, Americans, but Chinese women living on their own and dying on their own. Like, you know, w- w- you know, what are you folks doing down there in, in the Asian communities to try to help, you know, lessen the burden and help with the social services and things of that nature? I'm not quite sure about like that regarding like women's services, yeah, things like that. But okay. for I know about for seniors, we're trying yeah. to keep tabs on them. We keep tabs on them so that we, we have do. telehealth services and meal delivery services, so make sure that they can have the most normal life as possible in these circumstances. Oh, man, that's great. That's great. And everybody gets involved because, you know, th- that's what really I, I appreciate a lot about the Chinese community, the the sense of family. If I mean, tell me if I'm wrong. The sense of family and coming together is something that is very important within the, the community. Thank you. Yes, definitely. This, um, this situation has really brought us together. And... I don't want to be critical of my own community, but before it would be that a lot of us, like you said before, we don't say anything. We don't express ourselves openly as often as, as we should. And so a lot of things, a lot of um, uncomfortable situations or experiences that are not like, just when they happen we don't say anything and so that also kind of causes 
certain parties to think that we can be taken advantage of. We can be hated on openly. So I feel that for the Chinese community now, we have become much more close-knitted than we were before because we were all like on our own. We were all on our own and we didn't want to band together. So that's one of the good things that has come out of this situation. Well, that's good. Becoming more involved in, in, in you know, in, in the culture of the not, the city and the culture of the politics within the city as well. And I'm yeah. glad because, you know, you know, it, it, I feel like that those, you know, I, I mean, it's unfortunate with everything that's happened. Let's be clear about that. But mm-hmm. the fact that you and I can get together and have a conversation because I want to know what's happening with you folks. And you know, I'm sure that down the road and, you know, you're also helping Latinos as well with the, in the elderly community. But I'm sure you want to hear from people such as myself that that know about what's going on. You know, you want to have these kind of interactions, you know, just as an American, because at the end of the day, you're an American. I'm an American. We need to find out what's happening within us, you know, to 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 have some fun, you know, and get to know what's going on with you. Because Asian, you know, Chinese culture definitely is fun, and Asian cultures, all the cultures, different, you know, Korean, whatever it may be, you know, Filipino, whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? It's, it, you know, it's good to know about one another if we're going to be living in the same space, you know. Now, one thing I did hear about Chinese culture, which I thought was awesome. Right. Is the fact that when somebody wants to get married, is it true that the family comes together and puts in money in a pot to try to get them a home? Or am I or is that is that <laughs> false information that I've been researching and receiving? Is that true or not? Um, I guess it depends on where in China they're from, I guess. OK. Because, Have you heard about yes. that or am I, am I am I out of control with that one? It really I, I think it really depends on. Each okay. household. I might not be 100% correct myself, but I have seen okay. some people like their families would chip in to have help them you know, have like a wedding home. I would say <laughs> that's awesome. I love <laughs> like it. the home, the home that comes out of a wedding, <laughs> a marriage. Yeah. So um, nice. some some families are also just if if the children want to get married, they're on their own. So I guess it really depends. Most now, families one more... would be open to helping each other out, though. So. That's great, though, that the families are open to helping each other. That seems to be like something that's a theme within, within you know, the culture, if you will. Oh, that's great. That's so nice. I wish, you know, that was everywhere. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know, I feel like when you when you, you spend too much time in America over 60, 70 years, all of a sudden things change. But, you know, I'm, you know, it was like that, you know, in a lot of cultures, but things change, you know, here. I mean, I guess it's the cost of living and things of that nature. So it is what it is. Now, one more thing I wanted to ask you about, because Halloween is coming up. And, mm. you know, what do you think about cultural appropriation when it comes to Halloween because sometimes things from the Asian culture and the Chinese culture seems to be a costume when it's a custom, you know, when it's part of like life and it's something to be, it's a tradition, something to be valued. But sometimes during Halloween, we use that as like a costume for that day. Does that bother you in any sense of the way that you feel like that builds like understanding with the community, you know? For me, I'm not too, you know, I I don't worry about that. I actually okay. do enjoy when someone from a different race dresses up in a Chinese, like, chi pao. Like, for example, okay. I think I saw in the news there was this girl who wore a Chinese dress. It's called chi pao for Shipao. her... For her what do you call it again? Oh my! This is how you know that you're old when you forget high school days. What is the <laughs> dance prom? Okay. Prom. <laughs> this is so sad. So uh, when she wore a cheap hoe to prom, and she was getting a lot of hate for that. A lot of people were like, "Oh, you're culturally appropriating." But I thought that it was very nice how she for you know an important day for a teenager to be wearing 
are dressed from a different culture. So for Halloween, Halloween is a different story, I guess. But still, I am not that bothered by it. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, we reached the point in the podcast, Miss Shen, where it's time to play Five Words with Angel. Now, on Five Words with Angel, I'm going to give you a word, phrase, or a question. You're going to give me the first word or thought that comes to your head. Are you ready, Miss Shen? Maybe. Okay, here we go. Maybe is yes here on the Age of the Worst <laughs> podcast. So the first question is, because I need to know this as a foodie and a fat man at heart and in real life, where's the best Chinese restaurant in New York City? Where should I go to get that real stuff? Flushing. I know Flushing, but where in Flushing? What's the name of the restaurant? I know Flushing. I've been to Flushing. I've been there a few times. I'm oh, from, man. you know, I'm not from Queens, but I live in Queens currently. Oh, I see. Well, so Main Street, you could say Flushing Main Street. That's so large. Where should I go? What place? What avenue? Do you remember an is, avenue? That is where? tough because that is very tough because mm-hmm. any restaurant you go to in Flushing is going to be a hit and not a miss. Really. Yes. So, all right, so stop eating in Chinatown on the Low East Side. You got to go to Flushing for the real deal. And by the way, do you go to those malls, the strip mall situations? Because I know that you got to go inside, then they have the markets. I know about that. Trust me, I've been venturing off for a long, long time. Nice. I know that you go in there, you get artifacts, you get cool stuff, but you also get food as well in there. A lot of those places sell food. So you have to go to Flushing and you have to take a risk is what you're saying. When you see food someplace, go in there. And what should they ask for? What do you like? What do you like? Okay, so since I'm Shanghainese, I'll recommend a Shanghainese cuisine restaurant. It's, uh, I would say, 40th Road. 40th Road. Like, when you drive on Prince Street, right? Okay. To Roosevelt Avenue. Got you. Right? And then the, the road ends, like you go a bend. What is that road? I think 40th Road. There's like a place called Shanghai Yu Garden with very great soup dumplings. Soup dumplings? Yes. So and order I the believe, soup dumplings when you get to that place. You don't even have to order it. You just make sure that you uh, order enough food. I think it has to be like up to $15 or something. And you get a free like bamboo um, of, of like the bamboo plate, right? Because the yeah. soup dumplings come in the bamboo plate of soup dumplings. So it's it's like, fantastic. Because yeah. I'm going to be honest with you, uh, Tina. I mean, growing up in the hood here in New York, East Harlem, we grew up on Chinese food. Is that real Chinese food? What were we eating? I mean, it's <laughs> delicious, but what were we eating? You know what I mean? Let's be honest. My whole life I've been eating Chinese food at least 50 times a year since I was like God knows how young. You know what I'm saying? So, like, for people to be like, yo, like, you know, like, you know, th- that's what I don't understand the disconnect because blacks are eating Chinese food, uh, Middle Easterns are eating Chinese food, uh, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, Colombians, Peruvians, we're all eating this when we're not eating the food that we're made at home because, you know what I mean? Chinese food is everywhere. You know, that's why sometimes I've like, it just boggles my mind the disconnect between us when we grew up eating this food. It's like part of the culture. But is it like the kind of food that we should be eating? Is that real Chinese food? Or can, can you get like a general souls at a real age, at a real Chinese place? Or is there other things that we should order that we don't even know about? Please. You will not get a general souls at an authentic Chinese restaurant. <laughs> there you go. But there's, there's that best of both worlds really because i love mm-hmm. general Tso's chicken right yeah and i i like if i go to a restaurant and they have general Tso's chicken on the menu i'd probably order that too or sesame <laughs> chicken or orange chicken right yeah. <laughs> but i guess for that it would be like more americanized chinese food okay. and that's that's a class of its own and it deserves my respect and okay probably a lot of 
Chinese people suspect. So, um, I can't but the say soup that. the dumplings. Yes, the soup dumplings are okay. great. Yes, okay. and make sure you bite and make a little hole and then sip out the soup because it's very hot and then okay. add some vinegar to eat it. It's oh great. Oh, my God. That yes. sounds delicious. It really I is. I hope I can find that because, you know, I put a lot of B-roll on the, on, on the thing. I hope I can find that. That was the longest five words with Angel first word ever. I'm glad <laughs> that we had that conversation. <laughs> Because I'm like, I'm right. a foodie. I'm like, yo, I need to go to get the... Because I've been to Fleshy, so I'm glad that I've eaten some good stuff because I have been eating some good stuff there. So I'm glad to know that I went to the right place to get the soup dumplings. You oh, know. definitely. And are there any, like, entrees or anything that you recommend before we go on to the next word here on Five Words with Angel? Um, that are not soup related? Because I know that, that that a lot of cuisine has is, is soupy, and that's the thing. Something hot in a bowl is the thing. It's the, mm-hmm. it's the shiz, you know? But that's yeah. it. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, thank I you. can't recall. But for do you eat spicy food? Of course, we eat spicy food. For the people that eat spicy food, it's delicious. I eat spicy food like crazy. I oh. go to a place in Jackson Heights that's Thai, and nothing's hotter than Thai. Like real Thai is nuts. Forget it. Oh yeah. Like that's not for the faint of heart. Like you're gonna. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I'm talking about. You know what time you it should... is with that Thai food. You should definitely try Sutan food then. Sutan. Yes, uh, like S I C H U A N food. Okay. It's um from the province Sutan. Okay. It's super spicy. Okay. What about the Sichuan? Yes, that's exactly what. I'm... That's what that's what you're talking about. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the Sichuan food, the Sichuan. That's the type of the the, the type of Chinese spots I like to go to. The Sichuan spots are always really the, the most. Oh bomb. great! Because yeah. they have the bok choy that is a little bit spicy. It's like it's official. Like it's it's amazing. Oh yes, yeah. I love it when vegetable is, you know, it has been uh, ground in the hot sauce. It's yeah, like so marinated, if you will. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's good. Wow. Okay, great. All right. So we're going to move on to the next word. That was, that was amazing. <laughs> All right. So the second word is elderly people here on Five Words with Angel. What do you think about when you think about elderly people? Sweet. They're yeah. so sweet. I love it. I love it. Now, the third word here on Five Words with Angel is Tai Chi. What do you think about when you think about Tai Chi? <laughs> Lose weight. <laughs> 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 you know, um, when I see the elderly, right, when the seniors, they're doing Tai Chi, I'm always busy doing something else. So I yeah. never get to jump into the Tai Chi and, you know, get my groove on. But recently, seniors have been telling me, Dina, you should do Tai Chi, lose some weight. <laughs> It really well, is. Well, um, you know, seniors are always good for being real with us, unfortunately. <laughs> you don't want to be they, hearing They really it. are yeah. real. They Tell them really it's the good. quarantine 15, man. That's it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> More like quarantine 50. <laughs> oh, I mean, me too. Don't feel bad, you know? I'm, I'm on the same boat as you. <laughs> but, yeah. The- <laughs> Tai is really great, though. It really yeah. balances the whole body. Even though really the movements does. are so slow. Very good. Well, it's the good thing. It's the breathing process that goes on with that. You know, I mean, I've su- I've done it a lot before. I studied, like I told you before, I studied Chinese philosophy, and you know, I, I did. I, you know, I was doing Chai Chi for like two years wow. straight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you know, and then unfortunately, I graduated from college and had to get into the real world and totally forgot about <laughs> every single thing that I learned in life to keep me balanced. But that's neither here nor there. We we'll continue. We'll continue Same. on to the fourth <laughs> word. Okay, you were born in the year of the what? Is the pig. first one. The year <laughs> of the pig. Yes. <laughs> All right, and this is totally unrelated to Chinese culture, but it is Asian culture overall. The new phenomenon, Squid Game, is number five. Squid Game. Have you seen it, heard about it? Is it rumbling no. within the community? No. Have you heard about it, though? No, not at all. What is it? Squid Game is is a Korean Netflix show, which you can listen to in English, 
right, with English subtitles, where it's a mixture of uh, the movie Saw, Hostel, and Hunger Games all mixed into one with an oh. Asian backdrop and Asian themes. Okay, so, so uh, I have heard of it. Think about that, yes. And it's the new cultural phenomenon. Get on it before Halloween because you're going to see everybody in Halloween with those costumes on, including myself, and you're not going to know what the hell you're looking at. So I would suggest <laughs> that within on your weekend, which is now is the weekend, you should watch at least one or two episodes and uh, get put on to what's happening right now in American culture, not only Asian culture. This is an American phenomenon now. It's, it's turning into one. <laughs> Now, Tina, please, if you could, right? We want to know a little bit, right, about Asian culture and interracial relationships before we end the podcast. Is this something that is still looked down upon? You know, because we're in 2021. Is this not looked down upon, but is it something that's weird still to the culture? Is it something that's more socially acceptable now that, you know, we've been here, all of us, essentially, for uh, at least 80, 90 years now, you know? Mm, yeah. I, I believe that it is socially accepted. Good. That's it's good actually looked up upon in some ways. Unfortunately. Really? Yeah. Okay. Like, oh, why do you say un- why do you say unfortunately? Well people should be able to be with whoever they want to be. Yeah. But there are certain times in the Chinese community it people are more respected in some cases if they marry someone from a different race. And interesting. Interesting. Yes, I'm not supporting the idea that you know a Chinese person should marry a Chinese person. Well, you're or, just telling us what you see. You know, it's not yes. something that I'm not asking you to support or not support anything. I'm just asking exactly. you what you've seen. You know, what you yeah for or like an Asian, an Asian marrying an Asian only, but yeah. to kind of worship someone who succeeded in marrying someone of a different race that is not right. Yeah. But it just happened. In okay. okay. We see that in the Latino community as well. Don't feel bad, baby girl. It happens really? everywhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is hilarious. Yeah. So that's really cool well, because every culture is somehow yeah. connected and having the same timeline. Well, it's the American it's experience, you know? It's the American experience, you know? You have some people that feel certain ways about things that, you know, obviously in my family, we don't comment, but I know pl- plenty of families where they have extremely like like elongated opinions about things of this nature, and I'm like, this is none of your business. It's love. Don't get involved. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it doesn't matter. We shouldn't, ha- we shouldn't care overall. It's America. Obviously, we have options and we have different race options. You send your kids to school with different races of kids. What do you think it's going to happen, you know, as they grow up? You're going to have a a larger understanding of different types of people. And, you know, you may not believe in the same things that somebody does in your own, you know, culture, if you will. You know, we shouldn't be like, you know, killing each other uh, over it or being upset about it or becoming racist over it. It just is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's love. It is what it is. like, you know, mm-hmm. I don't go out of my way to want to marry a Latina. If it does, great. You know what I mean? If it doesn't, I'll teach my kids Spanish myself. I don't need a, I don't need my wife to do that for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, <laughs> it's just, well, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know how it is. You know, and yeah. it, it, these things happen in all different, you know, races, you know. But it's, it's, it's beautiful that there is some kind of, you know, integration happening in the Chinese community. And it is accepted. And, you know, and. Uh, we, we're able to uh, understand and appreciate each other. Uh, Tina, before we sign off on the Angel of Words podcast, where could we find the Elderly Center in case anyone's interested out there on the Low East Side that has parents that are elderly? Because this is a great center. They do yoga. They do a bunch of stuff. It's a big space. 
where they do amazing you. things, you know, and also where could we find you if, you, if people want to reach out to you because they loved you so much and they want to reach out to you either on social media or website, whatever you have available. Just let us know the skinny before we sign off here on the Angel Awards podcast. Sure. So for Sunlight, we're currently not open yet due to the pandemic because okay. um, we do care for our elderly health. So right now we're delivering meals and delivering telehealth classes. So if anyone is interested, they can call us at 718-886-8577. And we are located in Flushing, but we do provide transportation when we open up. And oh, for me, so right now I am redesigning my website. It will, I promise it will be fantastic. It's tinashen.com. So like my first name and last name, dot com. You can also find me on TikTok. So um, I guess that's, that's it. At Tina, Shen, at Tina Shen as well, T-I-N-A-S-H-E-N, or do you have a different name? No, it is a different name. Yes, it is a different okay. name. You're right. It's, where I think can we find the, you? Or is, yeah. <laughs> you might find me or you might not find me because I don't remember my username. <laughs> okay, well, you know what? <laughs> Tic Tac can do that to you, so I completely understand. Well, yeah. Miss Shen, thank you so much for speaking your truth and joining us here on the Angel of Words podcast. It was fantastic to have you. It was a pleasure. Thank you for being so candid with us. Everyone, that was Tina Shen you know, community contributor here in New York City. And before we sign off, don't forget to follow us on the YouTube channel. Click on that notification bell. Like, follow, share. Please, these messages are very important to relate to one another. Number two, please uh, follow me on all podcast platforms. I'm everywhere. Uh, Spotify, Anchor, Google uh, Podcast, uh, Spotify, you know where we are. Also, exclusive content on the blog is at AOWENT.com. And for donations, please go to Cash App AOWNYC. Thank you for tuning in, everyone, and we will talk to you later.